Hello and welcome into Barrels and Barrels, the Bourbon and Baseball podcast. I am Brandon alongside my guy, Michael Burns, my sidekick, my friend, my pal, the one and the only Michael Burns. Michael, how you doing my, today, buddy? My guy, my guy, huh? Yeah. Let's go. I'm ready to You're drink some bourbon today. Ready to drink dude. some bourbon? Uh, this is a Bourbon and Baseball podcast. As always, we'll talk about bourbon. No baseball today, though, because it is just a whiskey review. It is a bourbon review. And before we hop into that, I do want to ask you, if you're watching here on YouTube, please give us a subscribe right there below us. And you can find us on YouTube uh, at Barrels and Barrels Pod. Um, don't forget to subscribe us. Hit the like button. Comment a few things or your thoughts maybe on this episode, episodes of the past. Uh, and we'd love to hear your reviews on Apple Spotify, we've got listeners on Google Podcasts as well as iHeartRadio and over on Amazon is where you can find us and stream us as well. So with that have said, we added we are, any other countries? Uh yeah, we have. I'll have to look it up here one second. I've got to pop that up here, uh, right here at the yeah, tip so of while, my finger. So while Brendan's doing that, you know, if if you've had this pour, whatever we review in a review, send us an email or patch us on Instagram or Facebook and let us know what you think or what you rate the bourbon or whiskey or whatever we're drinking today. We've we've had single malt uh, American whiskey on here. We've had uh, regular Tennessee whiskey. We've had bourbon. That's, I and think, rise. all we've covered so far. Oh, and rice. And rice. rice. Yeah. A couple rice so far. Um, I believe Bushwood and uh, the, um, the sample we just had from Bourbon Hunt the other day. Um, right. So Michters. bourbon hunt, Michters. You got it right there, Petty. I'm proud of you. That was that was that took such focus. <laughs> it did. It did. Uh, as far as countries, we've got listeners uh, according to our platform from the United States, Germany, Ghana, India, Dominican Republic, and Norway. So uh, we are international. Uh, and speaking of international, um, whiskey is international, right? And uh, so is baseball, but on the whiskey portion of things, we talk bourbon for the most part because uh, that is in the name of our podcast. And we're going with a bourbon today. We're going with short barrel toasted bourbon, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. This comes in at 94 proof. Um, it is. Go ahead. I said, ooh, toasted. Toasted, yeah. Let's it's get a toasted. shorter, squattier bottle. Um, it gets a little fatter towards the top, but. Really elegant bottle. I saw a lot of this on Instagram, I think earlier last year, earlier in 2022, um, where I noticed they were coming in like briefcases. It was really cool. Uh, mm. But that's where I first saw them get on the map. But then they're really popping up all over the place now. They've got a lot of expressions. They've sent this over for us to try. This is a short barrel, toasted barrel um, whiskey, it's Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, non-chill filtered, coming in at 94 proof. Um, they're coming in mm. out of Atlanta. Cool story behind the guys at short barrel. Uh, they're three friends who actually would just do barrel picks um together in like 2016 it started uh it's adam patrick and clinton i know clinton does a lot of their social media work and i've had some chats with him so shout out to them uh they're out of atlanta as i mentioned um they didn't start as a company until 2020 uh july 12th of 2020 so shortly after short barrel yeah short barrel the company and then they didn't start putting stuff on the shelves until 10 months later uh, into early 2021. So they're relatively new young. Um, as a company. They've been doing this for a while. 2016, uh, they started. They picked over 350 different barrels of different kinds of spirits, um, working with Jacks in Atlanta. Um, they both have, all, all three of them have full-time jobs on top of this as well, which makes it uh, kind of more of a hobby, uh, but uh, they're really starting to expand. And I know they've got a lot of cool things coming down the line. I saw they had a... Uh, a live on Instagram the other day where they hinted at some news in early February. Uh, hopefully we can get them on for maybe an interview on our podcast at some point in the near yeah, future. To hear their um, palates, you know, if, if they've yeah. picked that many barrels, they must have a pretty good palate and, you know, a trusted palate. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said if they see something that they like, they're going to put their name on it and put it out at a fair price. And this bottle um, comes, I'd say, at a fair price, fifty nine ninety nine. That's right there towards the middle, about where most bourbon is nowadays. Uh, look at Michter's. That's at 45 to 50 on the shelf. You look at other different bottles like Barrel Vantage or Blue Barrel Note. 
blue note blue note uh juke joint and uncut in the 40 50 range i've seen um so it's right there in the medium tier i'd say it's not overpriced it's right there uh at the 50 to 60 dollar range not bad uh so that's where that is it is four years old mash bill 70 corn 21 percent rye nine percent malted barley this is sourced obviously because they are picking it from different distilleries and they don't just go through one distillery i believe i think they have they just make picks and then they toast it uh or they'll finish it i know they've got honey finished barrels uh that they put I out you're gonna say they pick multiple from different distilleries and then blend it themselves i was like whoa no the they might do that down the road. I'm sure they might think about that because they have mentioned on their website barrel experiments are down the road. So that could be part of it. Uh, but this is right. a small batch. It is toasted, as I mentioned, and that means it's been toasted for at least 45 days at a minimum. Uh, it, it could be a little bit longer, but their, their note says 45 days minimum. On the bottle, it says for a minimum of one month. But the uh, information I got for them says 45 plus days. So I'm going to go with the 45 plus days um, on this. Have you been able to crack this open? Give it a sniff yet? I, what are your I, thoughts? I, I learned that you got to let it really sit in your glass for a little bit to for the glass to fill with its aromas. You're going to dump it in and try to sniff it right away. Yeah. It, it takes a lot. You can't pull out the deeper notes. So I've, I've had this sitting in my glass since we uh, started talking here and as I sniff this, it's wheat. I mean, immediately hits my nose as, you know, uh, honey on the nose. That's what the first thing I get. Um, do you have any questions or thoughts about Short Barrel as a company? Um, I, I think it's really cool. It's just like a group of guys that decided to get together and say, hey, let's start putting bourbon out that we like and put our name on it. Right. They they don't necessarily have the, at the time or, not, you know, didn't have the skill set to still their own so they're they at least have a good palate and know what tastes good that's a creative way to start a company you know to get into the bourbon world that's awesome yeah and the name short barrel has a little bit of a um, history to it or uh, meaning to it a short barrel is a barrel that upon bottling has lost over 50 percent of its contents mm -hmm. out to angel share um, and due to the higher contact with Aaron Oak, the whiskey inside ages differently, developing a unique and powerful way. Uh, so a select few bottles that come from it tell a story of withstanding aging, evaporation, and Kentucky seasons. That's what's also cool about whiskey is you can't really remake it. Right. A single barrel. A barrel is a barrel. And it, it, right. it, the, wood, the wood has different you know, grain in it and such. So it, you could try to make the same barrel, same bourbon taste the same. They're pretty close, but they'll never be the same. So one right. thing I wanted to point out there. What's interesting is it says Kentucky straight bourbon mm -hmm. on the bottle. So yeah, what so makes it comes it a from... Kentucky straight bourbon because it was just a straight bourbon because it was aged in distilled in Kentucky okay. at Green River Distillery, and then after it was aged, it was sent down to Atlanta where they barrel or they take it out of the barrel and bottle it um, or toast it um, or toast it. Okay, so... so as long as it was a bourbon process was completed in Kentucky. It's a Kentucky mm -hmm. straight bourbon, and then they can ship it wherever they want to, take it wherever, and yeah. they can have their way with it. By law, I, I believe it's two years in Kentucky. It could be a little longer for it to be considered a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, but this was aged for four years before it went into the toasted barrels, so it's already well past those two numbers. I don't know that what, number what right cool off way. the top of my head. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying it again. What a really cool way to get involved into bourbon. and mm -hmm. you know, if, if Even if you're not putting your own, out your own juice necessarily, but to you know, experiment with it in your own way to make what you think makes it taste good. Well, that's a cool way to get involved. Yeah. And this whiskey, as I mentioned, it's fifty nine ninety nine. Um, I've paired this blind with uh, their other um, toasted, which is a 101 proof, um, which was actually a younger bourbon. And I preferred this over that one. So I'm interested to hear what you say uh, about this, what your thoughts are. Uh, you said honey right off the nose. I yep. get uh, I get caramel and maple. I can pull some of the honey out of that. Yeah, I do get that maple. Now, interesting that I'm, I'm interested it's 94 proof. Ever since Tyler from Stranahan said 94, is that like special chemical balance? Right. It's a number that sticks out to me now every time we see it. Yeah. Uh, I get a little bit of cherry, um, which tends to be my bourbon note of the nose, right? Like, right. That's the one that I pull out the most. 
Ooh, so a little, a little like juicy fruit, a little citrus, ju like juicy yeah, fruit. Yeah, I've got a little citrus too. I was just pulling that and pick, picking that up. Um, and I can smell the toast. It's not... I smell the smoke for sure. Like there's a smokiness to the nose to me. Right. We're but, do a little first sip to get activated to it. Yeah, so you can find them on Instagram, uh, Sh Short Barrel Bourbon, uh, at Short Barrel Bourbon is where you can contact them. Uh, they also are available in Tennessee now, I believe. So they're not available everywhere. I think it's Georgia, Tennessee, and Florida. Uh, and they've got a lot of different options out there. They've got a bunch of single barrels that they put out. Uh, and I know a lot of them just went all over uh, Tennessee. So go check that out. They're very popular in Georgia. Uh, Tanya Vots is where I got the sample of the 101. She also sent me a sample of the first Bees Knees. I went to go buy the uh, their mm -hmm. recent release of Bees Knees 2, um, and I set the, the alarm for the wrong time of day. Uh, <laughs> it was like a 10 a.m. Eastern release or 11 a.m., and I set it for p.m., so my alarm went off, and I was like, oh, no. Um, and I had missed out at that point by the time I went and checked the website because uh, they only had a select amount of bottles and barrels um, of that. So right. your first thoughts on this short barrel, 94-proof toasted barrel, uh, Kentucky Straight Bergman Whiskey. Michael. Yeah, I, immediately when I'm, my, the palate's matching the nose, it's getting uh, a sticky honey, sweet taste that's hitting my mouth. And then moves into the oaky bourbon of it, and then finishes sweet. There's not much spice to it. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying this. Yeah. Uh, it's not overpowering at all. I think I can pull out each and every part of it. There's a sweetness. There's a little bit of a spice towards the back, but not bad. Uh, it's It plays well. Yes, it plays very well. Uh, I've got oak. For sure, I can definitely taste the smoky toastedness. It does have like a a candied cherry flavoring to me, um, and that citrus does come through a little bit. Not much, but a, a little bit. I get the honey and like maple uh, out of this as well, and I think I get a lot of maple out of toasted just because of the the sugars that come from the toasted barrel. Right, right, uh, yeah, and that and it sticks in your mouth. It doesn't fade into. Right. Into anything else, it stays. Um, it's not overpowering. I'm. It tastes good. Mm-hmm. I'd call I, it. I'm uh, just seeing. I'm just seeing the honey that cherry will be here. You know, in my <laughs> mouth right now, hearing the honey. You know, wand. It lowers your cholesterol. <laughs> All right, <laughs> like curbs your cholesterol. Like I can't say that word. Uh, I'd say it a walnut color. Walnut, walnuty color. Um, a honey color. Good juice. Yeah, a honey color, a walnut honey color. Michael's all about the honey, and this isn't even their honey barrel. Um, they've had three of them. They had the Bee's Knees, the first one, which came out in late 2021. And then they had their Beekeeper, uh, which came out in early 2022. I wish I would have tried their first. Bee. Actually, I have that sample. I'll have to try that from Tanya. 132 proof on their first honey barrel. Um, I proof sweet or something yes, sweet. Yeah, so... Oh, baby. Uh, uncut, unfiltered. So I definitely want to try that um, and just see what that's like. This is very good. I've got uh, the finish to me is, I hate to use the word smooth, but there's no bite to it. We've had a couple of drams here lately where there's been a burning sensation towards the back, and I don't get that from this. Um, I think that it's uh, it's got all, it checks all the boxes, right? It's got that oak it's got that um, that general just bourbon feel. Um, I I really enjoy this. So on our barrels and barrels of bourbon baseball podcast rating scale, um, which is baseball themed, because why wouldn't it be right? Uh, we go from Hall of Famer at the top as the number one uh, all star number two. Uh, there's generally a few all stars on the team, but not every bottle is an all star. Not every player is an all star. Everyday player is someone that you want every day in your lineup. That's probably something that you're always going to search for to put on your bar. Uh, the moment you finish one, uh, you likely are going to buy another one. Well, I would say an all-star is probably the one that you have backups of or you try to find backups of, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and then as we head on towards the bottom of our ranking seal, bench isn't a knock by any means. We mentioned that a couple times. 
a bench player, think of him as a specialty player, someone who comes in in a time of need or to mix things up in the lineup. That is what we call our bench player when it comes to a bourbon uh, or a whiskey. And then the final rating is a DFA. Designated for assignment means you've been cut off the team. Uh, we don't want you on our team. Go find a home somewhere else. So with that, um, what do you think right now on our scale, Mike? Um, usually if something is real sweet, I give it more of a bench guy. Hey, this is more of a dessert bourbon. There's a time and place for it. This is an overpowering sweet. The 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 flavors balance each other. Um, the, the the oak, the sweetness, the rye, um, the the viscosity of my mouth. It, it, I can sit here and talk to you and still taste the flavors as it lingers in my mouth. So I gotta go everyday player. I, I would I would buy another bottle of this. Yeah, uh, I really enjoy this bottle. Uh, very good pour. Uh, I'm gonna have to send you more samples because you like it. I'm just gonna continue to sh ship some. Maybe short we'll just ship. Samples. Maybe we'll just share some together in you know in the same place in the same room, Brandon. Yeah, we'll have to do that. Maybe sometime soon. And you're near Georgia. You could just drive to Georgia and get some since you're in Alabama. In short barrel. Right. You said Tennessee, Georgia, and Florida. Three of yeah. the four bordering states of Alabama. Yeah, so it's not too far for you, right? Uh, you just make a short drive. Uh, but you can check these guys out. I am going to also rank this as an everyday player. The more I sip on it, I got that honey and brown sugar up front, changing mm -hmm. to those candied cherries, uh, and I get that toasty oak uh, on the back. Very enjoyable pour. Um, very good bourbon here. If I saw another bottle of the 94 proof, I would totally grab it. So go check out what these guys over at Short Barrel are doing. Very enjoyable pour. Um, They've got some other cool things that I do like. I told I talked about their honey barrel. They've got one coming out right now called El Jefe, uh, which is finished in mezcal um, barrels um, or wood, uh, which is pretty cool. You don't see a ton of that, right? A lot of it's the wine finish right now. That is fifty nine ninety nine. They also had those short barrel honey ones that I mentioned, but they've got bark for batch uh, or bark batch for fetch, excuse me, um, which was. Uh, uh, exclusively out in Georgia, but they also have different store picks that you'll find. They've got a rye um, as well. Look for the green label. The cooler part of this was the SOTF Toasted Small Batch. That's Special Operators Transition Foundation, and they uh, they did a batch specifically for them. And twenty dollar donation from every bottle sold goes to that foundation, um, which is really cool. Uh, helped it's a create sweet looking bottle too. Yeah, it's got like a star on it, like a American flag kind of look. Um, very cool stuff there. So hats off to the guys over at Short Barrel. Um, we'd love to have them on here in the in the future. Talk about what Short Bell is doing, what uh, to expect here over the next couple of months. Because I've heard 2023 could be a big one for good old Short Barrel. If you want to find them, you can find them at Short Barrel Bourbon on Instagram. You can find us on Instagram as well, Barrels and Barrels Pod. Would love to hear what you think of Short Barrel, of our podcast, of anything else we've rated or reviewed in the past. And I've gotten some great reviews or some feedback from some listeners. I know Keith has talked to me quite a bit, uh, my buddy Ryan, um, and uh, we've got new listeners joining in. So if this is your first time listening, thank you for listening. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Rate, review us. You can listen to us uh, on Apple Podcasts as well as Spotify. We have that on Amazon and Google and iHeartRadio. And we're on YouTube. You can watch every episode on YouTube and look out here in the next couple of weeks because we may have some more YouTube video content that's exclusive to YouTube or Instagram. Um, maybe some distillery go. stuff coming up. Go. So go check that out. Uh, any last words for our friends and family here, Mikey? No, I'm I'm curious if they're in, if Short Barrels in Georgia, how close are they to Truist Park? And are they Braves fans? Uh, I'd be curious to know if they're baseball fans over there. Uh, I think one of them are, uh, at least, because uh, I believe it was Patrick pitched in D1 for baseball. Uh, D1 okay, college so pitcher. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty cool to talk But he's talk from for, Dallas. For baseball. So he's from Dallas. So I'm assuming he's probably a Rangers fan, but it could be an Astros fan. But who knows? Um, and uh, the other two, uh, I would assume, are Braves fans. But I'm not going to throw that out there um, onto them. 
but yeah, it would be cool to talk to them about baseball and about what's going on at Short Barrel in their uh, in their company and here in 2023 going forward. So that has been another edition of Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast. Find us on Instagram. You can find Michael and I's handles right above us. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. Oh, we love that you've watched and you've listened this far. Uh, and uh, we'll continue to try to put out our best content here over the next couple of weeks. That is it. I am Brandon. That is Michael. Thanks for listening. Have a great rest of your week. Let's go. Cool.